So now you're going to need to make a ground. The ground you're going to run, it's going to be insulated. So you're going to need to strip some back. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to strip a little bit back off here like this. I want to show you something. I'm going to run this through. You're going to need a ground going through all three boxes. Technically, this is your ground. They don't even really need to run a ground when they run all these metal boxes in EMT because if they connect the ground to here at one box and all these connectors are tied in tight, then they're connected together. They're bonded. All right? But what happens if some kid comes along and loosens up a screw and then the strap comes off down here on this one and this pipe pulls away from the connector and the bond or the box is grounded over here and all they see is these wires sticking here and there's no ground so we've lost our bonded box we lost our ground so we're going to also run a ground to make sure that doesn't happen to each of the boxes uh, but technically sometimes the electricians they won't even run a ground they'll use the conduit as ground because everything's metal uh, but if it comes apart then you lost your ground so we're going to bring a little loop in here like this and then I'm going to bring it, and I'm going to use all one piece. So, but you're going to need about that much there, six inches coming out here. And I'm going to actually start back here and strip back here a little bit. And I'm going to actually strip a little bit off, not all the way, but enough. But uh, right, right, let's see, where we lose it? Right up in here. All right, boom, like that there. So that now I can run it in here like this. And I can just wrap this around the screw. Alright, my screw's a little close to my connector, but it'll go. There's one in here. Like that. Get it wrapped around. And then you can lock it down, and you already got your pigtail. You already got the pigtail sticking up. So you see that? Now I've just stripped them out and we already got our pigtail so all I need to do now is make a hook and we're ready to connect up to our switch. Still need to do one here and I'm going to need about six inches back here. So I'm going to go ahead and you could also sometimes if you want you can just uh, cut the wire insulation in two different spots and then some guys can shave it. You like to shave it. All right you can shave it like that. All right and once you get it to the next cut should be able to just peel it off. So that's one way of doing it to get a piece out like that. And you just come down like that. Now I've got it off like that because I cut, cut. But didn't cut the wire, just cut the insulation. Or if it's real long, you can do it, but it starts to bind up a little bit when you're pulling it and it's really long like that. Uh, so it's up to you what you want to do for the center one. You can slice it a little bit or you can try and pull it a little bit. But I had one screw up, so I'm gonna go ahead and make sure it hooks around the one screw, tighten it up, and then move it on to the next box. Is there an Oscar in here? No. That's um, next class uh, uh, period, what is this, two? It'll be period one. around here all right now I'm bonded the box is grounded I can push this ground down out of the way now and we're all done with it and I got the two pigtails for my for my two switches Okay, so now you're going to fish the rest of the wire through. And now I'm going to give you the power cord last again, but you're going to need a red, a white, and a black going from one box to the other. And if you take a look, you can't see it on this picture because it's black and white, but there's one that's a little lighter, not quite white, not quite black. It's a red one. Okay, so that's going to be my red wire. And you see on the diagram, they have it tied with a wire nut in the center fixture box. Uh, we're not going to do that because you're running the wire from one to the other. What I'm going to do with the red is... I'm going to go ahead, we're just going to fish it through, and you're just going to loop it, but you're not going to cut it. So bring it in, give it a little loop like that, and uh, push it all the way through to the next, next, next box. Okay. Make sure you got enough, because normally, like I said, 
If you used Romex 14.3 instead of the conduit, the EMT, uh, you would have to probably have two different red wires wire nutted together. But because we're running it through conduit with all one, you're just going to loop it like that, push it down, be done with it. That's it. Don't need to cut it. Don't need to do anything. Make sure you got your six inches still on either side. So now the, the red one's done, and I just need a white and a black to go from each side over. Okay, coming out like that's good. And that's it, the rough end's done. So now I've got all my wires ready for rough end, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and do the light fixture first. So if you take a look at the diagram, the white one that comes from the left side with the power source is gonna go right to the light fixture. So that's this white one right here. And this way I do this first, I don't get it confused with the other white one that's gonna have uh, 120 volts flowing through it. So go ahead and set this one up, make the hook, All right, and then the other one for the light fixture is going to be the black coming from the other side. So the black one coming from the other side here is going to be the one for the light fixture as well. And that just leaves me the other two to wire nut together. We're probably going to need two yellow wire nuts at some point. So I got those set. White to the silver screw. Tighten it up. See how much that pulled up, all right? When I, it was really low, and then I, and make sure you also reset uh, the other screws if you're not using them. Tighten those all the way up and set them down. But you see how much I got insulated, uninsulated, sticking out. Watch, this is why you do it with the tightening of the screw. So by the time I pull it down, all right, and I give it a really good tightening, it'll pull that uninsulated part up and make a complete loop if you do it right. But you gotta have it really in. Oh, see that? Pulled it up. Then I can just push it back under the tooth like that and we're good. So that's it for the light. The light's done. Now I can go ahead and I can either do this part here, which is going to be a wire nut, so I can cut these. And just tie them together with a wire nut. You could twist them together at first and then cut it and put the wire nut on, or you can use the wire nut. Uh, just make sure there's no bare wire sticking out below between the wire nut section, that last part that doesn't have any grip to it, okay, those little ridges. So you might have to trim it back so it's about 5 sixteenths of uninsulated wire and then twist them together. And then again, see I don't see any bare wire and there's no insulation up underneath the metal part either. So that's good. So that's done. So now all that's left is the three-way switches. So I'm going to go ahead and I can hook uh, the ground on first. We're going to go ahead and hook the ground up, tighten that up. Hook the ground up over here. Now, which one did we say was the most important ones? Red? Red's important? No, I don't think red's important. We said something about the common. Which one's the common? The black. No, 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 no. Neutral common's different than the common on my switch. So, which one went to the commons? What did we say was important about the commons? The, the hot. power The cord. power cord. So I need my power cord. Somebody took my power cord. I had a power cord that went with this. All right. And then uh, the other one went to what? The black one goes to the common. To the fixture. The black one goes to the common on Stay. that screw there. That's good. Thank okay. you, sir. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and hook this one up. Common going to go right to the light. I already got it. Alright, 
and then my other common. Now look, if you got the two from the previous project, all right, you're going to need to cut one of the terminals off. All right, one of them is the only one that you need on the on the hot wire. The other common is going to get tied with a wire nut in that box and get pushed down. So uh, you might have a white and a black, and you might see one with a terminal like that. All right, so I could use that one because this is the one that came from the project. Uh, which one was the the hot on the this smooth. one though? The smooth. smooth, smooth. So make sure to go with the smooth one on the common terminal. The rough one and the ground. Ground you can either hook here or I could put a terminal on it and put it underneath one of the screws there. It doesn't matter. But you're probably going to need, you're not going to need both spade fork terminals anymore. You're not going to need any more of the sawdust terminals on the neutral wire. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to shove this one in. I'll put it in here like this. easier if you didn't have it already stripped, but it'll go in. Right, and you need about, remember, about six inches or so, and then I can go ahead and tighten down this connector. Hot one to common. Now, white one, a neutral wire. I'm going to go ahead and strip a little bit off that. And then if this is messed up, you need a little bit more, go ahead and get a little bit more. Now, how much should the strand is stick above the solid before I put the wire nut on? Anybody remember that? About an eighth to a quarter, about an eighth really, about an eighth of an inch, right? So the strand has got to stick up above the solid for it to catch in the screw, all right? And then what it'll do is it'll catch the stranded pieces first and wrap around, wrap around, it'll wrap around. Yeah, no insulation showing, wraps around, and then the biggest part is you got to pull on it to make sure it doesn't come off, okay? No coming off is good. And then I'm going to go ahead and just do my ground real quick. Now, we can make it all one piece and make a hook and just attach it, but I'm going to go ahead and use the spade terminal. Fork, teeth, lock it in, crimp it down. I used the wrong, I'll put it on the back side, but I think I can get it. All right. And then to make sure uh, it doesn't pull off. And then I can just loosen up that screw on the bottom and slide it right underneath the screw head, and that'll be grounded. Is. So now I just got about everything done. Now all that's left is a red and a white over here, and all that's left is a black and a red over here. Now it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what color. I can put the black one on that side. I can put the red one on that side. I can reverse it. It does not matter. Once you get the commons taken care of, all right, then it doesn't matter. So I'm going to go ahead. Now we're good.
try and keep the wires from getting twisted up and on top of each other inside the boxes. It'll make it easier when you need to push them all down together in the box to put the screws in. So you can kind of keep them from getting all twisted. That'll help you out a little bit. So that's it. I'm pretty much done. Now, again, if they got these wings, you need to get the wings out. Cut those little tabs off for the drywall because we're using metal boxes and that's for a drywall box. What? The plastic? Uh, some. You could have a metal drywall box. It depends on the thing. Now look, you can either cut them straight up. should have goggles on because that piece could fly across the room. Or you can take it with needle nose or limons and wiggle them right up against the cut. Doesn't matter what you do. Both ways work just as good. All right, so that's it. I'm done with the wiring. Now, let me show you what happens. Hold that up. So you need to do the same thing. You would have everything pushed down. This is how I'm going to leave it for this project. I've got another one that's complete over there, but this will allow you to see this one. So this is about as far as I'm going to go with it. But you need to make sure everything's bonded. Okay? The boxes, the switches, we're all good. Ground. But you should not have any continuity to any of the polarity plugs, all right, on one side or the other to ground. That means you have a short. But what happens here is, let's see what that is. Is that Okay, so that's my neutral on the left, all right, and that's it. That won't have a break to it. That neutral goes right through, through here, through the wire nut, and in here. Boom, all right. Then now the other one is off right now. And then you come down here. Let's see, wait a minute. Let me switch it over here, and it's off, okay? So you come over here, and you turn it on, and then somebody else at the other end of the hall turns it off, okay? How is that working? Well, right now, we've got the power coming in here. And remember I told you it's double throw, so depending on which position this is, determines, okay, so it's going through the red. It's coming down here through the red. We didn't break the red. Red, so the power's waiting over here. And it's waiting for you. It's not going to jump up here till we get the switch. There, see that? See how that works? All right, and now we've got it going back through this black, through the common, to the light. So the light should be on right now. And then you go down to the other end of the hall, and, oh man, we're not breaking at the red anymore. We flipped this switch up. So now it's over here at this black. The black goes to the white, connects over here. So it's there, but it's waiting here at the light for you to come along and turn it back on. Okay? So now what we got is we got a traveling circuit, all right? A traveler, where the power can, that's why you need that red wire. It's because it's going to go through one wire one time. And then when you flip, break the contact, it's going to wait for you to make contact to get to the other wire to energize the light. So once everything's done, let me see that light bulb. I'm going to plug it in without. Just be careful because you're not going to do this. You're going to have them all tied down with the switch. Let me see. We don't need the meter anymore. Let me see that power cord right there. I know. I don't want that one. you are getting in the way of the video. can get in the way of the video. All right, so look, look, careful, there's power there, but, wow, go to the other end of the hall, turn it on, turn it off, huh? and then if you get really good, some people can do it without even making a light, oh, look at that, huh, or you can, you can turn it off without, without letting it blink, huh, oh. or if you really want to get disco, yeah. it's like <laughs> some apartments, it's like no, no disco, all right, so that's the three-way. You need to buy, what you're going to have to do also, you're going to have to build your own material list. Tell me what you used for this. List it all down there. And we're going to convert this diagram that's a pictorial to a ladder schematic wiring diagram uh, that's going to show you how to do it. So I'm going to leave this one open for you to be able to see the wiring, uh, but don't touch it. Don't plug it in. Don't do, you're not going to do, you're going to have everything pressed down with the cover plates on by the time you turn it into me. Everybody understand that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, good to go. Thank you.